Time to get rolling. Rules confirmation of public elections committee, Tuesday, December 3rd at 5.30. And we have a quorum. Um, start with resolutions. RS 2019. Can we shut the door? I, I think they started to, but someone started coming in. RS 2019-125. I can talk loudly. Hancock, Syracuse, and others. A resolution honoring the life of Carlisle Beasley Jr. Is there a sponsor in the room? I'm a sponsor. Okay. So, yeah. okay. Is there a motion on it? Yeah. Someone. So moved. Second. Second. Okay. Um, anybody have anything they would like to say? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. All right. uh, RS 2019 126 O'Connell. Let's roll that to the heel. RS 29 127 Syracuse to the heel. RS 2019 128 Van Reese Withers and others recognize December 1st, 2019 as World AIDS, World AIDS Day. Is there a motion? Second. 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 Any discussion? If I can. Thank you. Um, for those of you who maybe didn't take the time or hadn't had the time to read the resolution, I wanted to point out that it was actually provided by the health department. A lot of the language in it is extremely important for you to know, um, and I appreciate them providing it. Uh, one thing that I wanted to point out um, was that there were 146 diagnoses of HIV in Davidson County in 2017, and more than 4,000 residents are living with diagnosed HIV, and an estimated 720 residents living with HIV but are unaware of their status. Um, it's important for us to always pause and, and remember those that we've lost. We can do that for a minute. And then to continue to recognize, along with the rest of the world, um, the work that we have a lot to do uh, to get rid of the AIDS virus. So thank you for your support of this resolution. Thank you. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Um, hop back up to RS 2019-127 Syracuse. Request the Tennessee General Assembly reintroduce the Main Street Historic Tourism and Revitalization Act and that the De Davidson County delegation to the Tennessee General Assembly co-sponsor the legislation. Your motion? Second. Second. Thank you. Anybody want to... Any questions? All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Jump back up. RS 2019-126 O'Connell, resolution recognizing Oasis Center Inc. upon the occasion of its 50th anniversary. Motion? Motion. Second. Second. Any discussion? All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? My work here is done. Thank you. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Very eloquent. <laughs> oh, RS 2019-129, Withers, Evans, and others, a resolution recognizing 2020 as the year of STEM and STEAM in Nashville. Second. Second. Thank you. Any discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Um, we have a late file amendment to 2019-45. Is that where's Hannah? Is Hannah or somebody? No. Okay. Well, well now that's okay. We'll just roll that one on down to the heel and go on to elections and confirmations. Um, first up is the Community Corrections Advisory Board. The reappointment of Mr. J. Michael Engel for a term expiring August 31st, 2021. The reappointment of Mr. Benjamin Hubbard for a term expiring August 31st, 2021. And the reappointment of Ms. Alyssa, Alicia? Alicia. Alicia. Thank you. Uberby for a term expiring August 31st, 2021. Um, first, uh, we've been asked to withdraw, or Mr. Hubbard has withdrawn. Um, so that leaves us with Mr. Engel and Ms. Overby. Would y'all mind bringing a couple of chairs up and join us for a brief moment? Um, you are both registered voters in Davidson County? Yes. 
Okay, would you mind introducing yourself, talking a little bit about what you found on the board and why you are seeking reappointment? Uh, well, all right. Uh, I have been uh, a member on the board previously. It is a purely an advisory council created by statute. Uh, these proceedings are interesting, but it's only in an advisory role. In terms of my background, I've got 28 years in the National Public Defender's Office. Uh, and in semi-retired, uh, where I'm handling a few of the cases. Thank you. Um, Alicia Overby. So I currently am a manager for probation and parole TDOC. So my input and um, comparison for community correction and TDOC probation has been very beneficial and also been beneficial for TDOC as well, comparing the two practices. Thank you. Uh, questions? Mm -hmm. Styles, you look like it's on the tip of your tongue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thanks for your watchful eye. <laughs> uh, so, give me a little idea. Of what brought you to want to be on the board in the in the first place? Well, I feel the position is vacated by a, 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 another attorney. I think this is the position of the defense attorney that's part of, statutorily supposed to be part of the, the board. It's a very carefully constructed board representing the mayor's office. You and then you're with parole or probation? Probation. And well, there's a parole person who will yep. also be there. Uh, it is somewhat interesting to... Uh, view of what's happening with this, as you say, uh, the, with all due respect, the community corrections case officers are paid on a, a contractual basis. This is a contract between the state and metro, uh, and thus the employees, the office, are all considered metro employees, aren't on the metro pay scale. Uh, and so therefore they get none of the benefits that this council might award over the course of years, and they're grossly underpaid. They're also doing a tremendous, tremendously good job. How much are they paid? I do not know that specific number. I know that it is less than less a than probation probably. officer would be paid doing yep. the same work. So it's in the <coughs> low 30s thousands a year starting off, I believe is what she said last time. There is high turnover, and the reason for the turnover is pay. Uh, um, for me, uh, whenever I, this was brought to my attention, it was an opportunity to help the offender population, but also the community, um, because again, we're being we're able to compare practices that they're doing with community corrections and what we're doing with TDOC and training. So they have they don't have as much training resources as we do. So I've been able to assist with getting them the right people so that they can be trained properly and be as trained as TDOC employees. Thank you both. I was reading your agenda from earlier this year, sometime in February. I think you all were applying for a grant. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Did that process finish, or...? That, that is the grant from the Department of Corrections. Mm -hmm. There are no other grants you guys involved were asking but for two, more. two community yeah, corrections. Correct. And uh, my understanding is that they the grant is in good stead? Or what? It is, but they wanted more yeah. money, but I think that was turned down. Yeah. What was the the increase for? Pay. Okay. Mm -hmm. I might add that Community Corrections also has a very, in my opinion, fine, those are going to consider this too, uh, program directed to the mentally ill mm -hmm. and the mentally retarded. That is an exceptional program uh, in this county, and I don't think it has very much replication anywhere else. Any other questions? Motion to approve. So moved. Second. All in favor of approving both for reappointments? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Thank you. See you all in the other room. <coughs> Electrical. Would you like to keep this one chair no. here? Yes. Yes, please. please. Um, or two, even. Right. 
y'all are leaving. Um, reappointment, uh, electrical examiners and appeals board, the reappointment of Mr. Iris Settles for a term expiring October 19th, 2023. Reappointment of Ms. Pamela Wyatt for a term expiring October 19, 2023. Could y'all both come forward, please? Hey, are y'all both um, still Davidson County voters? Great, thank you. Um, mind introducing yourself, talking a little bit about your experience on the board and why you want another round? <laughs> <laughs> Willing and able, I guess. <laughs> uh, my name is Pamela Wyatt, and I've been in the industry about 39 years, and and I enjoy it. I, it's part of my give back, I guess share my experience and be available for whatever I could do. You done already. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Ira Wayne Settles, and I've served this past time on the board. I have really enjoyed it, just getting to know and work with some of the finest electrical contractors and seeing, looking at some of the problems that, that some of the contractors have and being able to be a voice for them and be a voice for codes and I, I really enjoyed it. It's been an honor and a pleasure to serve and looking forward to serving again. Thank you. Any questions, discussion? What are problems that some of the contractors are having? Sometimes there's a plug that's left out in a thousand rooms <laughs> <laughs> and by codes it has to be there mm -hmm. and so they will bring bring that for uh, the codes to decide whether uh, they if, if there's an option, any other way that it can be done, some... Uh, we provide some, them variances to make these changes. And sometimes solutions for the problems mm -hmm. that, they, that they, they run into, things like that. Okay. Any other discussion? Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor, approve. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Thank you. Thank See you next door. Next up is IDB. Uh, we have two candidates for the Industrial Development Board to fill the unexpired term of Ms. Lindsay Cox for a term expiring September 19, 2023. Uh, Andy Bakta and Winnie Forrester. Could y'all please come forward? Hey, are y'all both uh, registered voters in Davidson County? Yes, sir. Right. Would you please introduce yourself and explain? I know Mr. Bakhti, you were here a little while ago, so just rerun the same thing. Absolutely. Uh, my name is Andy Bakhti. Um, I have a, a hotel management company. I'm in the hotel industry. Um, proud resident of Antioch in southeast Nashville. Um, have served the community for several years now through a volunteer organization called CNAP, Crossings Nashville Action Partnership. Um, in the hotel industry, we have dealt with many, many companies um, that um, are, are relocating to Antioch. Perhaps they have businesses in Antioch, uh, like Asherion, LKQ, National Predators, Ford Eye Center. So I'm very well aware of their business requests and business demands um, and how our area is helping to serve them. Um, and, and we basically deal with their lodging requests. Um, so I have a lot of experience in business, um, and I feel like you know, in, uh, in life, we have three goals, is to be the best professional you can be, um, to be the best family man you can be, or serve your family the well, and then serve your community and be the best uh, person you can be to help serve your community. Um, this will be one way for me to give back to our community and our government. Thank you. Ms. Forrester? Sure. Um, um, thank you for, to everybody for giving me an opportunity to come here. Um, and I especially thank Councilwoman Quante Toons for nominating me. I, I live in District 2. I've lived there about three years. I've lived all over Nashville. I moved here and maybe before some of y'all were born, <laughs> 1981. And um, so I moved to District 2 about three years ago. Um, I've been in the financial services industry for over 30 years. I uh, started at J.C. Bradford & Company, which some of you may remember. It's a regional brokerage house that had 
uh, very deep roots in Tennessee and Nashville. And I moved on to uh, Wells Fargo Advisors, and um, for the majority of my career, I have been a financial advisor and a certified financial planner. So I ran a portfolio for with uh, $68 million for my clients, which were mostly individuals, families, uh, nonprofits, small businesses uh, here in Tennessee. And about two years ago, um, I uh, took early retirement. I uh, had an epiphany and decided that I wanted to do something else with the rest of my life. And uh, I chose to move to uh, Bordeaux, the Haynes Trinity area with my family. And I've been involved in community service ever since then. So um, I helped the neighbors organize their neighborhood association in Haynes Heights and revitalized that. And we uh, assisted with the charrette and the update of the land use policy uh, throughout the Haynes Trinity corridor. And out of that uh, grew uh, the, uh, the Haynes Trinity Neighborhood Coalition which we started with a number of neighborhood leaders. And uh, uh, it's made a, up of uh, faith-based institutions and neighborhoods and um, nonprofits. And we have worked on a number of different issues in the last couple of years. Uh, the name may be familiar to some of y'all. And um, <clears throat> so I think I can bring to the board uh, a combination of my financial expertise and uh, also, um, you know, my community activism. So my heart is with people who are struggling, that are unable to make ends meet here in Davidson County, that can't find affordable housing and feel pushed out of Nashville. And I particularly want to assist in scrutinizing um, incentives given to corporations to make sure that it uplifts all of Nashville and not just some people. So appreciate the opportunity. Great. Thank you. Any questions for our nominees? We make statements. Sure. <laughs> so I nominated Andy, and I, I wanted to add. He's been modest. He is the president of the Cross Crossings National Action Partnership, and I've had an opportunity to watch him and his commitment, the three priorities that he has in action, and being very consistent. And I would like all of you to take that into consideration when you are making your choices this evening. He's definitely committed. Thank you, Council Member. Anything else? Okay, um, so we're just voting to tell the Metro Council, to tell the full council that both of these candidates are qualified. So if there's no objection, we'll take them together and vote. Um, all who agree with such a statement say <laughs> aye. Uh, aye. 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 Great. Thank you. <laughs> See y'all next door. Thank you. Chair, we had another name. Is that person? Um, Jeff. Jeff Wilson. Okay. okay. <clears throat> okay. Metropolitan Action Commission. The appointment of Ms. Berthina and Bob McKinney for a term expiring February 2nd, 2020, to fill the unexpired term of Ms. Zolfat Suara. Ms. Bob McKinney, please come forward. Hi. Hi. You a registered voter in Davidson County? Yeah. Okay. Would you mind introducing yourself again? Tell us a little bit. No problem. <laughs> Hi, my name is Berthina Nabal McKinney. I am currently an independent consultant specializing in school improvement and school turnaround work uh, with early childhood and K-12 um, institutions, <coughs> educational institutions. Um, my background is in education, more than 20 years. I've done work in public, private, and the nonprofit world around um, education. I'm very passionate about it. Um, um, and let's see what else. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> Any questions or comments? All right. so I have a, press I have a question. Sure. What's motivating you to want to be on this particular? 
for Metro Action. <coughs> um, one, I'm passionate about early childhood mm -hmm. and children. Um, so I feel like with my educational background and the work in um, the educational fields, and I've done work around um, uh, Head Start mm -hmm. as well as early childhood, um, private sector as well. Um, I feel like I can make an impact um, within there, also <coughs> in my community uh, work. Um, I do a, part, a lot of partnerships with families who need assistance mm -hmm. and partnering them with the services that are needed within the community. So. Thank you. Any other questions? Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have a good day. So, Mr. Park. <laughs> Metropolitan Development Development and Housing Agency appointment of the Honorable William Purcell for a term expiring November 5th, 2024. Mr. Mayor. Bill would be fine. That's all right. Um, are you still a registered voter in Davis? <laughs> I am. I am. I'm alive and I'm a still a registered voter. <laughs> <laughs> you do look alive. Best answer ever. Um, do you mind introducing yourself? <laughs> I'm Bill Purcell and my council member is here. I live in District 6. I lived there a very long time. Uh, I became interested in housing as a legal aid uh, lawyer. First at Vanderbilt, then as a legal services attorney. Then I was a public defender here in Nashville. I went off to the legislature where I learned about THDA and the work of the state and the partnership between the state and local governments. And as I began running for mayor in 1997, 1998, it became clear that we then had an affordable housing need in the city of Nashville that was broad and deep and was holding back the city. We worked hard over the course of the next uh, eight years, from 1999 till 2007, uh, through uh, partnerships with the private and public sectors. We uh, we met the needs as best we knew how, and by the time the uh, 2007 came, there was a general sense that we were on track. Obviously, the recession and other changes made a big, had a big effect on the policy of the city, the state, and the nation. There have been a lot of changes since then, but I've had an opportunity to, to meet with the, uh, the leadership of MDHA, and I know a number of those who are involved in the board, and I feel as though I could uh, perhaps be of service there. Thank you. Any questions or comments from there? I'm not sure if you have an extensive enough background. It's <laughs> 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 concerning. <laughs> Eddie, uh, yeah, Mayor, your work on you mentioned your work on housing and legal aid, and I know legal aid does a lot of work in the private sector regarding private sector evictions. What's have you gotten to look through the NDHA eviction policy? I, I honestly have not, and, and that is not something that, that I, in my own practice I would have observed or seen. Uh, but I presume that uh, I, I note that our general counsel is here, Saul Solomon, former legal director of the city of Nashville. And I presume it's something he could advise me on, and, and it would be appropriate if, if that's an interest and a concern of yours. We just finished an audit with Secretary Hall, uh, Sheriff Hall, of the entire eviction process. Flying calls a couple of tweaks to our policies. So we just finished that in the last 90 days. Okay, great. Uh, Mr. Mendez uh, was a part of that. So. Um, MDHA has a uh, voucher program um, for renters and partnering with landlords uh, here and uh, there's certain requirements um, you know the property must meet HUD quality and uh, but owners received uh, fair market rate um, we have a little issue you know getting um, landlords to sign up with this program do you have any ideas of how we could increase that Frankly, I think it's been a struggle throughout the life of the program. It's always a challenge, but I think that the point you're making is one that's been made by the council broadly and the mayor as well, and that is the change in market rates has had an effect clearly on that. Uh, I don't come into this office, uh, it, 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 should you confirm me, knowing uh, all that you know or that I will need to know about it, uh, but the notion that we should make sure that the programs that we have are providing in, in the way that they need to is obviously a board responsibility operating through staff is something I, I, I plan to, to be focused on. Thank you. Any questions or comments? Mm -hmm. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank, Thank you for your willingness to serve. 
Metropolitan House Trust Fund Commission, the reappointment of Ms. Kaki Physics Warren. For, did I pronounce your first Close name? Close enough. What is it really? It's Kaki Physics Warren. Kaki Physics Warren. Okay. Thank you. For a term expiring September 17, 2024. Are you a registered voter in Dana? Yes, okay. Do you mind introducing yourself? Um, I have been engaged in affordable housing work for most of my time here in Nashville and um, served for 10 years on the Housing Fund Board. Um, Mayor Purcell appointed me to the Homeless <coughs> Mission um, and then most recently have been, um, well, even before that, I was a nonprofit housing provider, so developed housing for people with addictions um, and their families. And so I've been on the housing providing side, I've been on the policy side. Um, and I think one of the other things that brought me to the Barnes Fund, or why I was originally nominated by by Mayor Barry is um, that my day job is making grants. And so I'm very familiar with the process of um, designing applications, scoring applications, um, re recruiting strong applicants. Um, and so I'm kind of a process person in that way. And um, I think one of the things the Barnes Fund is certainly, um, we, ha we have a lot of challenges ahead um, in terms of just um, funding and finding recurring funding stream that will ensure that the Barnes Fund continues to have um, money to invest in nonprofits developing housing. Um, one of the things we did last this year for the first time is had a strategic planning session. And so we're continuing to kind of follow up on that strategic planning session, um, dealing with um, kind of what, is, what does our structure need to be and what kind of capacity building do we need to be doing with our nonprofit partners. Um, how, how can we really operate a really good community land trust? So um, those, those are the sort of things that we're working on, and I would like to continue to contribute to them. Great. Thank you. Any questions or comments? Thanks. So you said you had a strategic plan. What out of that are you able to work on immediately? I know it's, it's very broad, but what is step one? Sure. Well, it, first of all, I want to go back to kind of what um, one of the things that happened, and that is that because I, in terms of transparency, you know, the the Barnstone had a, a poor audit this year, um, and um, one of the things that that audit said is that we really need to be able to define what does success look like for us, um, and it's one of the things that we hadn't done, and um, we. All of the other findings of the audit have been addressed and resolved, um, and so I'm very glad for that. But, but we really, as a, as a commission, need to say, what does success look like? Is it strictly the number of units? Is it the number of units and retention? Is it um, how our nonprofit partners offer diversity, equity, and inclusion, and justice in the work that they do? So there's lots of ways that we can evaluate our success. And um, that's what the strategic plan is about. Um, so while all the other audit pieces have been resolved, we really wanted to take time to answer some of those questions in an intentional way and to put, um, to, to bring together some, some consensus among commission members. Um, we also, in the midst of doing that, most recently we've had um, a round of grants that we were considering, and so um, that kind of took our eye off the ball for a short term, but today we actually uh, had a commission meeting and we got some, um, some initial updates from our, com our task forces. That was a long answer to a short question. No, but, but I was hoping for a long okay. answer, so thank you. We, do have, we have some work to do. We really do. Any other questions, comments? Your reoccurring income. Pardon me? Your reoccurring income, what is that coming from? And besides the grants, how much more do you guys want coming in? Ah, you mean for, for the Barnes Fund? Yes. So um, um, the Barnes Fund is really at, at the grace of the mayor's office and the council for allocating funds to, to the Barnes Fund. And historically, the, in the most recent history, we've received about $10 million a year. Um, and that all comes through, I guess it's the mayor's budget, the council's budget, but it's, um, it's approved by them. Um, we, the only recurring funding stream we have, but it kind of um, is part of that $10 million, is some of the fees from Airbnbs. Mm -hmm. So what the Barnes Fund really needs for, um, for um, sustainability, for dependability, because our nonprofit partners need to know that this money is going to be there year after year. Um, they're putting together very complex real estate deals with <coughs> layers of funding, and if they don't know they can depend on the Barnes Fund to be a reasonable source of um, money to leverage other money, 
um, than, um, than we're at a real disadvantage. So we need a recurring dedicated funding stream that is going to keep putting money into affordable housing. Um, and we need it to be dependable. We need that $10 million every year in a way that we can afford it. And, and I will also say that the $10 million, we this year had the most competitive round of grants that we've ever had. Um, we could have easily made 15 or $20 million of, of grants that, that would have been in projects that could have been um, kind of shovel ready um, very quickly. But we were limited, and our partners were limited because we put a $2 million cap on that and on what they can ask us for. <coughs> we really don't even know the capacity of our nonprofit partners because we haven't removed that cap. We're kind of artificially deflating what their capacity is. Um, and, and then we also have applications we could have funded that we, um, we can't consider because we don't have enough money to do that. Mm -hmm. um, so um, our nonprofit sector is really ready to help address the affordable housing problem in Nashville, but they need more resources to do that. So I've served on the commission, obviously, with Kaki. Um, and she has done a fantastic job in getting us toward um, that strategic planning model <laughs> thinking um, in a way that I quite frankly, I have an experience on another board and commission in Metro, so it's been um, really encouraging to see, and she's being um, very diplomatic because she's before us, but as I'm sure you're aware today, we found out we were awarding $5 million instead of $10 million, um, and at the commission, and so that functionally meant that there were 140 units of affordable housing that we thought we would be awarding today that didn't get awarded. So when she talks about that recurring revenue stream, the consequences of that were very uh, tangible yeah. today. The, it's, it's those units that aren't produced, but it's also very demoralizing for nonprofit partners who spent, you know, many hours putting together a very complex application in Performa and then realize that all that effort was for nothing. Mm -hmm. um, now they, they are steadfast, and they will want to come back and develop those units if we can find <coughs> that, that, that money for them. And I do want to point out that Hannah Davis from the mayor's office is here, and she has been a tremendous advocate for these Indeed. funds. So. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? Is there a motion to approve? Thanks. Thank All in favor? Aye. All those? Thank you. Oh, ma'am. Okay. Oh, and you went parked on Bay Street. Oh. <laughs> Public Records Commission, the reappointment of Judge Steve Dozier for a term expiring August 31st, 2023. Um, the appointment of Council Member Tanya Hancock for a term expiring August 31st, 2023. And the reappointment of Ms. Sue Cooper for a term expiring August 31st, 2023. Um, Joe Mine, up. Are you? You want me to sit right there? You're fine right there. Do we have first? Josh, how are you? Yes, thank you. Do you need one or are you covered? No, I'm covered. Okay. Do you mind introducing yourselves and talk a little bit about why you're uh, yeah, go ahead. Okay. Oh, thank you. Ladies. doing another four years on the Public Records Commission? <laughs> I'm Sue Cooper. Um, we, you know, we are responsible to determine this, if our history is so important, and we are responsible to determine what records, what historic records we keep, how long they're kept, and, um, you know, I think it's a privilege to be able to be a part of this group, of this commission. Steve Dozier, uh, been a judge next week, will be 22 years, been on this Public Records Commission. I guess I inherited it from Judge Schreiber. There has to be a judge of record on the commission to sign off on destruction of documents, uh, Metro documents. Um, so when he died, someone thought, well, when I was to put me on there and I've been there ever since. Uh, we, we, you know, it's not one of the most uh, publicized commissions, but as Ms. Cooper's indicated, I mean, we do important things that anyone would be concerned with. The councilman, there has to be a council member on there. The county clerk's on there. The tax assessors is either on there or representative. Um, one of the things we've dealt with in the past that's important to everybody are, is email retention. 
uh, how long that's kept. We um, um, read Williams. It, it's huge in terms of keeping the records and the space out there at the records uh, out on Murfreesboro Road. And, and eventually, I mean, we're going to metro is going to run out of space. But I mean, we're required to be here by law. Um, try to mesh with or do mesh with state regulations as well as their retention policies and, and keep Reed happy. And we have input from Metro Legal and the Metropolitan Clerk attend our meetings and give us input and, and sign off on destruction of. Uh, there's been an effort recently to for Mr. Rooker, Mr. Gentry to help them cut down on their paper records that have been stored. Ken Feith from the library is here, and he's always concerned about, you know, give me Andrew Jackson's signatures or things like that. I mean, that, that he wants to keep at the library. but So we monitor that and sign off on that. Thank you. Any questions? Well, I, I'm Councillor Tony. <laughs> <laughs> so, I've been in my role for, I was elected four months and two days ago. <laughs> I'm honored the meeting will be next week. <laughs> <laughs> I'm honored that Mayor Cooper um, nominated me for this position, perhaps recognizing my attention to detail or perhaps my OCD qualities, but especially honored to be hopefully following in the footsteps of Honorable Councilman Sledge over there and um, doing my best to bring diligence to this role and my um, 10 years experience with the Fortune 500 company Texas Instruments as well as four years working for the Department of State covering cybersecurity. I think that I can help with some advice and advisory capacity in this role. Councilman, are you still a resident of Davidson County? Have you ever registered yeah, voter? Or have you? I live in District 9. Nine. Next district, which was district. <laughs> it's the only that's, purely that's Madison. Councilman from Pride Mars District. All right. Any, uh, any questions or comments? For, um, I greatly enjoyed serving with you, and me rolling off this commission is no reflection on these. <laughs> <laughs> but it's still enjoyable. All right. Is there a motion to approve the so two reappointments? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. And to approve the appointment? Seven. Seven. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you all very much. <laughs> okay, next up is the sexually oriented businesses license business licensing board. Sports authority, I think that we made a scoop. Metropolitan Sports Authority, yes. We did. This is next on the agenda. Oh. The appointment of Dr. Ashley Wood. I want to get to Councilman Harrison. Okay. A appointment of Dr. Ashley Wood for a term expiring August 7th, 2021. Dr. Wood. Hi. Hi. Are you a registered voter in Davidson County? Yes, sir. I am. Okay. Would you Mind talking a little bit? Uh, sure. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for having me. Um, my name is Ashley Wood. Um, I moved here about four years ago from Virginia, and I work mm -hmm. at uh, Vanderbilt University Medical Center um, in the Office of the Dean. Um, but I also, in my um, personal time, I volunteer with the Junior League of Nashville, and part of that volunteer work, um, I work with our human trafficking um, partner agencies within um, Middle Tennessee. So in Slavery, Tennessee, um, you have the power, uh, Thistle Farms, Renewal House, and um, a couple of different other um, organizations, but part of that work, I have worked in both the public awareness capacity, providing educational information and prevention information um, to the, our community members, as well as direct services to survivors and helping them um, with everything from um, resume building, um, transportation, legal services, health services, things like that. So um, I'm really surprised and excited to um, have the opportunity upon confirmation serve um, the um, city in this capacity and help maybe provide some advisory information to the board about um, awareness and um, information about human trafficking within the city. I think that's a lot of words. I'm very nervous. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, this particular board's had issues getting a quorum for a lot of meetings. Mm -hmm. Are you familiar with the meeting schedule? And it's I not am, yes. Any problem? Okay. No, not at all. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, any other? How did you hear about this board? 
Um, I have a colleague from uh, the Junior League of Nashville, Ashley Warrington, who's a part of the mayor's office, and she recommended me to be a part of the board. Okay. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. What part of Virginia were you in? Um, I'm from, um, originally from Central Virginia, so the Amherst County area. But Amherst, for, okay. Yes, ma'am, but for the past, um, gosh, I have been in the Blacksburg area mm -hmm. um, since um, undergraduate education, so yeah. uh, a long time, about 12 <laughs> years or so. I did my undergraduate degree um, at Radford University and my graduate work mm -hmm. at Virginia Tech. Okay, yeah. Thank you. A motion to approve this, Hokey? So All in favor? Aye. Thank you guys very Thank much. You. I appreciate it. Thank you. The appointment of the Honorable Frank Harrison to the Sports Authority for a term expiring October 19th, 2023. Mr. Harrison will fulfill the unexpired term of Mr. Chuck mm -hmm. Merriweather. Councilman. A registered voter of Davidson County. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> I think you already know my name, but I'll repeat it. I'm Frank Harrison, and uh, I had the privilege of uh, uh, representing District 5 uh, for four, eight years uh, in the Metro Council, and I had the opportunity also to represent District 2 for eight years in the Metro Council. And uh, I was born and raised here in Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, I went to Haines School, and I also went to Tennessee State University, where I uh, finished uh, a BS degree in health and physical education. And so uh, uh, with that in mind, uh, that uh, I think kind of qualifies me to a certain degree t for the uh, sports authority, uh, since I do have a background in, in sports. Uh, I've been a coach. Uh, also, I had the privilege of being on the Metro Council in 1995 when the Sports Authority was uh, uh, recommended to the Council uh, to be on a referendum, and we approved that. Uh, so uh, all along, I've been uh, following the Sports Authority, and uh, I'm ready to get to work. Uh, honored that the mayor uh, would see fit to uh, ask me to be on the Sports Authority. Uh, I'm looking forward to being there. Thank you. Any questions or comments for Councilman Harrison? I just mm -hmm. want to recognize your service and say thank you for your service thank to you. our country. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. That was too easy. <laughs> <laughs> we can do another round later oh. if you like. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. Transportation Licensing Commission, the reappointment of Mr. Kerry Rogers for a term expiring October 20th, 2023. Mr. Rogers, are you a still registered voter of Davis yes, County? Yes, I am, unless I've been purged. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that hasn't been happening. Yeah, sure. um, do you mind telling us a little bit about yourself and why you're... Sure, I've lived in uh, Inglewood in uh, what's now District 7, uh, Councilwoman uh, Benedict's district, for about 30 years. So I've been around uh, for a while. When I first moved there, I was one of the youngest people. Now I'm almost, almost one of the oldest. Uh, and as you know, I used to tell people it was, uh, you know, there was cheap housing in Englewood. That's no longer true. <laughs> and actually, about 20 years ago, I was appointed to this uh, commission by uh, Mayor Purcell. Sort of interesting. He was here again. But back then, it was a much simpler day, as Mr. Fields can tell you. We only had, <laughs> we only had taxis and wreckers. As I remember, the big excitement was when two taxi drivers would get in a fight. You know, and we'd have to decide how to discipline them. Now, of course, you have, well, you know, pedal taverns, uh, scooters, uh, pedicabs, the whole. It's been a much different experience, to say the least. Uh, I uh, was a. Uh, uh, I'm filling an unexpired term, and so I've been on it for about six months, so I'm relearning the whole thing all over again. Uh, and actually, about the time I was on the commission the last time, I was uh, diagnosed with cancer and spent a couple of years fighting that. It was a lot of fun and started riding a bicycle. Uh, I hate running because I wanted to get in shape, and I've been riding a bike ever since. I got involved in bike advocacy. Uh, so I am now Mr. Field's bicycle guy. <laughs> <laughs> and before you ask about scooters, yeah, actually, it's much better than it was uh, about a year ago. I think uh, you know it's interesting. We're up. To, how many rides are we up to? Two million. At least two million rides on those things. So somebody likes them. I know a lot of people don't, and I understand that. So we need to get them off sidewalks. 
But they are an alternative method of transportation for whatever. Now, in other cities, those same companies have brought bicycles, uh, uh, dockless bike share. And so my goal is to get some of that in Nashville if possible. So we're, we're in the process of doing that, I think. So. Any questions, others, about scooters or rolling <laughs> hot dogs? <laughs> yeah. I want to make it clear, I've never ridden a scooter or <laughs> been on a pedal tavern. <laughs> so I don't have per personal experience with any of them. But. You didn't mention the hot tub. Right? <laughs> <laughs> he didn't want to share his staff infection. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're not going to have to do with that, are we? <laughs> anyway, any other questions or comments? All right, it's motion to approve. There's a second. 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 Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming. All right. Thank you. That yes. leaves yeah. us with a late filed amendment from earlier in the agenda. Uh, this is a late filed amendment to ordinance. Actually, it's actually Bill 45. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. So, so here's what happened. We actually had two versions of the amendment that we were going to present tonight because there were some questions as to what we could, quote, legally do, because obviously we're, we're, we're delving into the bond world when we get into uh, this conversation. So uh, our attorney, Mr. Cooper, had reached out to the Bond Covenant Board, and we tried to get some answers Friday, and we got a return, excuse me, before the, the Thanksgiving holiday, but we didn't get the return phone call until Monday after 9 a.m. Well, everybody knows the timing. And so what ended up happening, the two amendments that were in the original package, I'm pulling those completely. And there was one that has been rewritten, and that's the purpose of the late file to where it would be accommodating, should the amendment pass, it would be accommodating for the bond uh, covenant board. So that's why, because we didn't get the phone call back, we didn't have the language from the from the bond covenant board until after 9 a.m. yesterday and the substance of the amendment is basically what was in the amendment package. that's right right they, there's just some language changes in it and and frankly uh, chair it'd be I mean basically what it does is it doesn't tie the hands as much as the original amendments do it still would provide the money it would just, it would literally require a little bit more of a pinky shake as opposed to us saying the money will be dedicated here because that was where the Bond Covenant Board was having a problem with it because all the revenues that come in have to be pledged towards these bonds. So that's the reason for the late change, and that's the re it wasn't because we hadn't been trying to get it done. It was just we couldn't get all the players on the same page at the right times. Anybody have any concerns? Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Sorry, I was I just was running late. Thank Good. you. All right. Um, if anybody, nobody has anything else. We're adjourned. Awesome sauce. Yeah. <laughs>